Greetings, everybody. My name is Lokita Maka. We are back with another basic chemistry lesson. In this lesson, we are discussing grade 11 agricultural sciences, and we'll be talking about organic compounds. So if you want to hear, let's say, a different voice from your teacher's voice, if you're a grade 11 learner, want to repeat some of the concepts that your teacher has taught you, or maybe you didn't understand some of the things that were taught in class. So my guy, I'm your guy. So please feel free, relax, get your pen and paper. And uh, if you are new to this channel, please press that subscribe button. And if you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for your support. So let's get to, get to it. Um, now, today we are discussing organic compounds. And as you have um head from my previous re video as i have mentioned on my previous lesson that organic compounds are compounds that contain carbon so now if we're talking about these compounds they are basically a large class of chemical compounds which are covalently linked um one atom linking to another so most commonly they are hydrogen oxygen or nitrogen all these may be linked to a carbon atom so there are a um, few carbon containing compounds which are not classified as organic compounds i have mentioned this on my previous lesson so you can go back there and listen to it and why are we saying they are not organic compounds they are regarded as inorganic compounds so let's discuss now the carbon atom. Now, carbon atoms form the backbone of the organic compound. But now let's look into the characteristics of the carbon atom on its own. Now, the carbon atom contains six protons in the nucleus, right? Now, that's why we are saying it has atomic number six because the atomic number represents the number of protons inside the nucleus. Now, what does that mean? It means that the number of protons is equal to, to the number of electrons, right? Now, we represent now this element carbon with the symbol C, right? Now, if we are saying it has six electrons then that means it has four electrons that can form a covalent bond and how does it do that it means that it has four valence electrons so it is tetravalent so now the two the two electrons will be on the first shell then the remaining four now will be on the outer shell right so these are the ones that will be able to form the bonds, right? Now, this atom has an ability to bond with multiple elements, right? And um, it is available in various shapes. So the, carb the carbon atom can form single bonds, double bonds, even triple bonds. So oh, let's look into basic groupings of organic compounds. We've got four main groups of um, organic compounds. So the carbon will combine with four other inorganic elements to make up the to make up most of the organic tissue components in living organisms. And now, what are these? components what are these um main groups right we've got proteins we've got carbohydrates we've got lipids we've got nucleic acids right now let's start with carbohydrates so the elements that are contained in carbohydrates are carbon hydrogen as well as oxygen and these groups these organic groups the main function for them is to provide energy. So they are a major source of energy and also a major source of food. 
Now, getting into proteins. Now, these are large molecules. They are also complex molecules, and they play vital roles and and the body, right? They are made up of hundreds and hundreds of smaller units, which we call amino acids. And these are attached to one another in long chains. So now, proteins are biological cat catalysts, right? And they form structural parts of organisms, right? Okay. Then we've got lipids. So the elements that are found in lipids include carbon, they include hydrogen, they include um, oxygen, nitrogen, um, phosphorus as well. And these are major cell membrane constituents and most of them are oils, fats, and waxes. So there are various organic compounds that are insoluble in water. Then we've got nucleic acids, right? Now, the nucleic acids store organisms' heritable information and its conversions into protein. We've got two major nucleic acids, We've got deoxyribonucleic acids, which is known as the DNA. Then we've got the ribonucleic acid, which is known as RNA. So the elements that are contained in this compound are your carbon, your hydrogen, um, oxygen, nitrogen, as well as phosphorus. So let's look into examples now of organic compounds. We're going to start with alkanes and then we further look at alcohols. Now, starting with alkanes, these are organic compounds that consist of hydrocarbon chains that are fully saturated, right? Now, what does this mean? This means that hydrogen will be bonded to a carbon um, atom, right? Now, four simplest examples of alkanes are methane. The first one is methane. Now, methane only has one carbon atom. Then that means that it will have four hydrogen atoms attached to it. Then we've got ethane, which has got two carbon atoms. We've got propane, which has got three carbon atoms. Now with propane, it means that it will have eight hydrogen atoms attached to these three carbon atoms, right? Then we've got a butane, which has four carbon atoms, right? So now if we look at methane, for example, now these Alkane has a chemical formula CH4. It is the most abundant compound on it. Oh, and also it is produced by microbes in oxygen-starved environments, right? And it is also produced in the gut of ruminants, such as cattle. So farmers use methane gas produced by decomposing feces as well as plant uh, matter to provide energy for their farms. The importance of alkanes in animals and plant metabolism include the following. I'll only mention two, right? But they are not limited to that. So one, the alkanes are the build, building blocks of um, many compounds in plants and animals, and also they play a huge role in the biology of eukaryotes, right? Now, for example, your fungi, your plants and animals. Now, for example, some yeasts um, use alkanes as the source of carbon as well as the source of energy. Then we've got alcohols. Now, alcohols contain carbon, they have oxygen, they also have hydrogen atoms, right? So th they are hydro hydrozole derivatives of 
alkanes and they are named after alkanes as well. So they have this hydrazyl group, which is OH, in a place of a single hydrogen atom. Right, so that should be in the corresponding alkane. So now if we look at the first diagram here of, of the first structure, let's look at methanol, the one with only one carbon. So you can see the, that one hydrogen has been replaced by oxygen and hydrogen atoms. All right, then we've got um, an ethanol as well, which, which has two carbon atoms. So now, why are these alcohol important? One, ethanol is an important renewable source of energy. Then the other thing that we need to note is that the fermentation of sugars to ethanol is used in the production of wine and other alcoholic beverages. So they play a huge role in the alcoholic uh, beverage industry. Right. So you can also think about other important um, roles these play both for alkanes and alcohol because you need to understand why are we discussing this in agriculture, right? Then let's look at thiols, right? So if we're talking about thiols, we're talking about organosulfur compounds, right? So these are sulfur analog of alcohols, right? Now, what does this mean? It means that sulfur takes the place of oxygen in the hydroxyl group. So remember, with alcohols, we said that they contain oxygen. Um, now, in this one, the sulfur take the place of, of, of alcohol, of oxygen, I mean, in alcohols. Now, what does this mean? It means that this word on its own is a blend of two things, theo as well as alcohols. So as you can see, the structure here is RS. H where now the R represent an alkyl or other organic substituent, right? Now, thiols are used as odorants to assist in detection of natural gases, right? Let's look at ethers. Now, most ethers are used in dyes. They are used in perfumes. They are used in oils. They are used in waxes. Now, this is a class of organic compounds that contain an ether group. That means an oxygen atom connected to two alkyl groups, right? So they have a general formula, R, um, O, R. And we now these R's, the other one has an hyphen. That's basically what I'm going to say now because it's going to take long if I explain this. Represent the alkyl group. So it's more similar to what I have mentioned on, on theos, right? Then we've got aldehydes and ketones, right? Now, in aldehydes, the carboxyl group has one hydrogen atom attached to it together with either a second hydrogen atom or a hydrogen group, which may be an alkaline group. Now, for examples, um, examples of aldehydes include methanol or ethanol, right? So we, we add the um, A-N-A-L or a yes, A-N-A-L, right? So both these ketones and aldehydes, they incorporate a carbonyl group or carbonyl functional group. That is the carbon atom of this group has two remaining bonds that may be occupied by a hydrogen or an alkyl or any um, aryl substituents, right? So if at least one of these substituents is hydrogen, then the compound will be hydrogen. Um, will be aldehyde, but if neither is hydrogen, then the compound will be ketone. Now, in ketone, then this means that 
the carbonyl group has two hydrocarbon groups attached to it. For example, a uh, propanol. Propanol, yes. Um, then we've got acids. Now, this is also one of the organic compounds that we are familiar with. Uh, for example, we use citric acid almost every day in our lives. We use acetic acid almost every day. Now, acetic acid is basically vinegar. And citric acid is mostly used as a preservative in sour flavoring. So now, how are these formed? How are acids formed? Now, acids are formed when an aldehyde now is oxidized to form a carboxyl group. So these are formed from aldehydes, right? Then we also have the next one salts the next examples so now these are formed when hydrogen of the carboxyl group of an organic acid is replaced by a positively charged ion such as sodium so the example that we use um, almost every day is table salt so these are salts um on my previous video i also used um an example of salts when we are doing the bondings, the chemical bonding. So it's also something that you can go back and check out. Then we've got the last two, the last two examples, which are amines as well as amides. So amines are molecules that contain carbon nitrogen bonds, right? The nitrogen atom is an amine. In an amine has a lone pair of electrons and 30 bonds to other atoms. So now the amines are used in making rubber dyes. They're also used in dyes. They're also used in the pharmaceutical industry. So a nitrogen atom with one or two hydro hydrogens is often referred to as an amino group. So basically, um, amines are formerly deriv derivatives of ammonia, where in one or more hydrogen have been replaced by a substituent such as an alkyl or aryl group. Then we've got amides now, which are functional groups in which carbonyl atom is linked by a single bond to a nitrogen atom and either a nitrogen or a carbon atom. So yes, that's that brings us to the end of our session. Thank you so much for listening. Um, I hope you have enjoyed the session. Please leave your comments below. Please leave suggestions on the topics that I can cover. This includes both grade 10 agricultural sciences, grade 11 agricultural sciences, and grade 12 agricultural sciences, not forgetting grade 8 natural sciences and grade 9 natural sciences. So if you've got any question or comment, please do leave them be, um, below on the comment section below. I really appreciate that. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe. Um, I truly appreciate that. Thank you so much, uh, my people. Until next time.